So this is the informal definition. I'm just going to put definition and put it in quotes. This is the informal definition of, of a limit. Of a limit. So we're going to define limit. So let L, so capital L, be a real number. So be a real number. So capital L is going to be the limit, right? That's what we use L uh, for the variable, right? So L has to be a real number, right? So let L be a real number. Okay, and now we're going to have some new notation, okay? It's L I M, like this, L I M. And then underneath it, you put an X, like this, and a little arrow, and a C. Okay, so this is the limit as X approaches C. That's how you read it. And I'll write that down in a minute, so don't worry. So the limit as X approaches C. Notation is really important. Of F of X is equal to L. So I'm going to write down exactly what I said. So is red, is red, the limit, the limit of f of x as x approaches c, so as x approaches, approaches c is l. That's how you read it. I'll pause here. So the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. That's how you read it. You can also say the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l. So you could say as x approaches c before you say f of x. So the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l. So what does it mean? I'm going to tell you what it means now. I'm going to write down what it means. So it means, that's what today is all about. Today is all about like knowing what this means. The whole, this is the whole section. It means, well almost, it means, it means that, well, at, when x gets close to c, so when x approaches c, it means that when x gets close to c, so x is approaching c, so when x gets close to c, okay, so when x gets really, really, really close to c, when it gets really, really, really close, the y value, remember y is equal to f of x, remember that from, from before, y equals f of x, the y value is getting really, really, really close to l. So it means that when x gets close to c, f of x gets close to L. That's it. That's all it is, right? So limits are about things getting close. We want to know what happens to the Y value when X gets close to C. We're going to do tons of examples today, right? Um, so when X gets close to C, F of X gets close to L. And that's called, so L has to be uh, a real number, by the way. So um, hmm, what else, what else, what else, what else? Remarks. This is not even in the book yet, but let's talk about it. So this is later, uh, well, actually now, I'll say it now. Uh, the limit is always a real number. The limit is always a real number. So it has to be a number, right? It has to be a number, like four or five. I guess it could be a complex number too, but we don't deal with that in this course. But it has to be a number. It can't be infinity, right? If it's infinity, then we say the limit does not exist, right? So if, or if it's negative infinity, it also does not exist. Sometimes you'll put infinity here, but in that case, we say the limit does not exist. So the limit is always a real number. So it must be a number for the limit to exist. So we say it exists if it's equal to a number. So if we, if, we, if we do this computation and we get like five, we say the limit exists. If we get seven, we say the limit exists. If we get infinity, it does not exist, right? Uh, if we get negative five, we say the limit exists. So it must be equal to a number. It's a subtle point um, because a lot of times you know, you'll put infinity, which is fine, it's a correct answer, but in that case, technically, the limit does not exist, right? So it's gotta be a number, right? It's gotta be a number. Two, this is a bit premature, but it's good, it's college. This is like from like next week, but we're going to do it today. Uh, you must be able to get, so must, we'll do examples soon, must be able to get, must be able to get uh, the same number, I'm trying to use the best language, the same number, the same number, uh, regardless of which direction we approach from. So if you're approaching a number, you can approach from the left or from the right, right? Like if you have the number four, you can get, you can get close to four from the left, 
and you can get close to 4 from the right. So you must be able to get the same number regardless of which direction you approach from. So you, you approach from. You approach. This is really important. This is kind of weird because um, this is not in the book in this section, right? But then you need this to do the homework. It's like, what? What's going on? Like, this is actually one point, I think it's 1.5 or something, like later. Like, that's like a few days before the test, right? But you need it to do the homework. It's ridiculous. So whenever we're taking limits, we're gonna we're gonna approach from the left and from the right. We have to get the same number. So like if you get five and you get two, not the same number, so limit does not exist. So for the limit to exist, you have to get the same number from both sides, right? Um, Let's go ahead and just start doing problems, like right now. Let's just start doing examples, and let's just do, a, there's one more thing in the section after this numerically, but let's, let's just do a bunch of problems until you think you got it. So you'll be given a picture, and all you have to do is find the limit. So on the test, you'll have like a picture. It'll give you the graph. So let's do it. Oh, this is fun. I haven't done this in a while. So let's see, because I have to make it up, because, okay, ah, ha, ha. Ah, I don't know, let's see you. What axis is that one? That's the... The y-axis, good, that's no, good, that's no, good. It's just in case, the y-axis, and this is the x-axis, right? X and y, x and y. And I have to draw a graph. I'll go a little bit slow. I know it's hard to copy graphs from the board. Uh, let's see, hmm, oh, I see, said the blind man. Here we go. So I'm gonna do this, put a little hole here. I'm gonna do this, put a dot here, and then um, I'm gonna put a, a, a hole here. And I'll go this way, like that. And now I have to give, I have to make up some numbers. So these are these are parallel. Uh, parallel. These are even. Ugh, not parallel. Wrong word. Um, this will be. This is going to be the number one, and this will be the number two. And this will be the number two. It's not drawn to scale. So that's so that's a terrible picture art. So one, two, two. Yeah. Okay, that works. All right. And we're going to answer it. We're going to we're going to ask a bunch of questions. Right. All kinds of questions from this picture. I'll. I'll I'll let you copy it. I know it's kind of, it's difficult to copy other people's pictures. It's much easier to make up your own. Mm -hmm. All right, so A. Oh, compute, 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 compute. So A. Oh, and this is the graph of f of x, right? So y equals f of x. I'll put that here somewhere just to make it look official. So y equals f of x, y equals f of x. All right. So we're going to use some new notation, uh, but not yet. So first, um, Let's, let's compute the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. Okay, as x approaches 0. So we want the limit of f of x as x approaches 0. So this is tough because, I mean, it's, it's easy, but it's tough because it's tough if you don't get it because there's no work to show. So basically, x is getting close to 0. So when x is close to 0, let's see, we have to go from the left and from the right. So from the left, when, when the x value gets close to zero, the y value gets close to what number in this case? One. There's a hole there, but it doesn't matter, right? We only care about what happens when we're close. I did it on purpose, okay? So limits are about being close. We, can, we don't care about what happens at one, just when we're close to it, or when we're close to zero. So if we approach zero from the left, we get one. If we approach from the right, we also get what number? One. So what should the answer be? One. Boom. Easy. Three points. Done. Right? So just, you might be wondering, what about over here? If you're approaching this way, it's gonna mess up. No, 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 you gotta be close, right? Get as close as you possibly can, right? So just be close, don't look over here, over. Just, just focus on zero, right? So from the left, we get one. From the right, we get one, therefore the answer is one. Just to show you some cool stuff, why not, it's college. This is gonna seem ridiculously easy, but let's do it. Let's take the limit as x approaches zero of f of x, but now I'm gonna introduce some new notation. This is called a one-sided limit. So we're going to indicate that we're approaching from the left. We can do that by putting a little minus sign here. Just, just to show you that. So this means you're approaching from the left, the minus sign. So th we now we know the answer is 1, right? Because we know from the left, it's 1. So there is notation you can use to describe what we just did, right? Let me show you the other one. So the other one, C, it's no erasers, C, limit, Ah, okay. Let's say you want to approach from the right. If you had to guess, what symbol should you use? Not minus, but what do you think? Plus, yeah, yeah, good, good, little plus sign, yeah. 
That's it, right? So this means from the right. So you approach 0 from the right, you get 1. So 1. So this is how, this is a better question, right? So first you're supposed to do these. Oh, look, they're the same number, so the answer must be 1, right? So that's typically how you do it. The homework is not like that, though. You will not see this in the homework, right? You'll just see this. So how do they expect you to do this? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe the book explains it. I haven't read it in a long time. So from the left, we get 1. From the right, we get 1. Therefore, the answer is 1. How about this one? Little d. Let's approach 2 from the left. I don't even know what the answer is. I haven't, I haven't thought about it. I'll drink some water. That was loud. All right. It's going to come out in the microphone. Yeah, I can hear myself breathe in some of the videos. Like, oh. That's <laughs> really, yeah. And you get haters and stuff. OK. We're approaching 2 from the left. What, any, anyone know what the answer would be? Two, very good, <laughs> Logan. You're right, it's two. I just said very good without checking, but you're right, it's two. Yeah, you approach two from the left, and look, the y value approaches two. Everyone see that? It gets close to two. See, it gets close to two. So the answer is two. Solid, like a pro, Logan. Two. That's it. Okay, E, E. Let's take the limit as x approaches two from the right. I haven't messed up yet today, which is really good. Remember, you get, if I catch a mistake, you get a point. So maybe I can go all semester with no mistakes. That'd be amazing. Two from the right. So what do you think it would be? One. One? Is it one? Yeah, it is. It's one. We're going to two. Yeah, here we go on that. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, you can go that way, too. Uh, so we're going to two, so we get uh, one. All right, so we're going to two, so we get one. Everyone see it? So we get one. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. A, B, C, D, E, F. Take the limit. Any questions? Any questions? It's supposed to be confusing. This is calculus, right? This is like, for most people, calculus is the hardest class they ever take in their, the hardest math class they ever take in their lives. Mm -hmm. I read that on the internet and I was like, whoa. Then I thought about it and like, for many people, calculus is their last math class. So by definition, this is the hardest math class you'll ever take in your life, right? It's kind of it's kind of cool, right? Like you look back in 20 years, like yeah. So we're approaching two. Oh, uh-oh. So from the left, we get 2. From the right, we get 1. So there is no limit. So what you do is you write D and E. Anyone want to guess what D and E stands for? Does not exist. Yeah, so, so they have to be the same. Right, so if they were both 2, then you would put 2. Right? So when they're different, it's D and E. Right? So when they're different, it's D and E. So approaching from the left, we get two. Approaching from the right, we get one. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, no. oh you just, oh, I know, I know, it's hard, right? Well, it's good, it's good, it's good. And then uh, D and E. Yeah, let's see, from the, from the left, we get two. From the right, we get one. Boom, game over, D and E. Doesn't work. This one was okay. From the left, we get one. From the right, we get one. Therefore, the answer is one. Therefore, the answer is one. Let's ask something strange. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, F of 2. So what? It's not even calculus. Like, curveball. <sighs> f of 2. It's 2. Is that what you said I see? Very good. Very good. It's 2. It's the, well, I think you said that. I don't know. But, but it is 2. You're right. So it's 2 if, if you said that. But it is 2. When x is 2, the y value is 2. Right? f of 2 is the y value when x is 2. So you skip the hole and you go to the dot. Right? <coughs> so it's 2. So it's 2. So this is equal to 2. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H. I have to sing it. F of zero. How about that one? F of zero. F of zero. F of zero. What do you think? Oh, does that even make sense? F of zero? Mm mm. As a, as a whole. So the homework will put D and E. They'll, they'll, they'll want you to put that in the homework. <laughs> but normal human beings write undefined. So I'll put that. So it's undefined. You can also put D and E, and it would be okay, right? But they just want you to enter something so that you get it right. So, right, there's a hole there, so there's nothing there. So D and E. Any questions on this example? This is a really good example of a question. Like, it's a harder one, actually. We didn't start with, like, the easiest possible one, so. Yes? 
for the um, approaching two from the left and approaching two from the right, can you go over like how you got the two different numbers? Absolutely, yes. So we're approaching two on the x-axis, right? From the left, we get two. From the right, we get one. So it's just like the two different? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Everyone see it? So from the left, so when x gets really close to 2, what happens to the y values? The y values, which have like more fingers, well I guess I do, but the y values, <laughs> which have like long tentacles, like <laughs> but I don't have those powers. So yeah, so 2 and then 1. And they're different, so it's d and e. If they were the same, then you just put the same answer. Oh, like we did here. Yes? So 2 is the closed circle and 1 is the open circle? Is that how you're viewing it? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. So when x approaches 2, from the left, it approaches this closed circle. And then when x approaches 2 from the right, it approaches this open circle. Mm -hmm. Yes? What if you had two lines coming from the same direction that weren't like holes, they were closed, which number would you choose? Uh, it wouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, 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 first of all, you would not be able to have this. This is impossible. Does anyone know why? What, what, what is it? Yeah, vertical line test. Oh, I didn't think anyone would know. Yeah, so that, that can't happen because then it's not a function. It fails a vertical line test. Deep, right? Yeah, good. Wow. Didn't think anyone would know. Okay. Uh, is that what you were asking or no? Yeah, they wouldn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could both be holes, though. They could, that could happen. If I do this, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, Mitch, no. Uh, Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Any other questions? Yes, yes. So if you did have it as the two holes, it wouldn't be D and E for F anymore. It would be Oh, if I did have it as the two holes. Good, what's your name? Sarah. Good, Sarah. If I, so this would become undefined. Okay. Yeah, so if we change it like this, then that, yeah, thank you, Sarah. And it becomes undefined. Very good. I forgot about that thing. Still following me. Any, any question? I brought the wrong tripod. My, my regular tripod has Velcro on it, so this Velcro is onto it. Like the sticky stuff, you know? Is that what it's called? Velcro, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got confused. Uh, so, yeah. So, Any questions on this one? We should do another one. Let's do another one. Oh! No, let's, yeah, let's just do another one. I, just, I, I thought of something else we could do with this one. Like, no, no, no. It's, there's only so much we can learn in one day, right? Like, I was going to show you something else, but like, no, no. Let's, that's in chapter three, actually. So let's, let's do another one. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I guess another picture, right? So let's see. At some point we'll stop and we'll just do all the homework, or most of it. Or probably all of it. We could probably do all, all of it. Uh, let's see, I gotta make, ooh, I know what to do. Maybe. Um, so here, one, two, three. I'm gonna put a vertical line here with dots. Do you remember what that's called from? Huh? Yeah, vertical asymptote, right? It's one of those vertical asymptotes. And I, now I have to draw a graph, trying to figure out um, what the best way to draw it is. Oh, I know, I know. Let's just keep it simple, right? Not everything has to be hard, right? Let's just do an easy example. We can do more examples. You know, we have, we have time. So compute. Compute. wonder if I have notes. Not useful. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. Let's try to approach two from the left. Ah, oh, three, 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 three from the left. So, what is the limit as x approaches three from from the left of f of x? Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, infinity. Is that what you were gonna say? We we're gonna say three. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's infinity. You see why though? From the left, it goes up forever, right? It just gets big. It's just really, really big. How big? Just as big as you want it to be. So, boom, it blows up. So infinity. So technically, this is D and E, right? This is D and E. The homework might want D and E. We'll find out because we're gonna do homework in a little while. On a test, though, I would want infinity. Infinity is more descriptive, right? It's telling you that when x gets close to three from the left, the y values get big forever. Yes, John. Solve the test if you put D and E. Yeah, I will. And the directions will specify. It will say, use infinity and negative infinity when appropriate. So you probably get, you probably get some pity points, like half or something. But you won't do that, John. You'll get it right. Uh, you, 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 you got this. B, I believe in you, John. Let's see. Let's approach three from the right. From the right. What do you think it would be in this case? 
Infinity, yes, yes, very good. By the way, these limits don't exist, right? They have to be equal to a numbers, to numbers, like, like John was saying, right? So, um, so technically the answer is also D and E. However, on a test it usually specifies to be a little more uh, precise. And then I guess the last one that we can do is, is this one. Let's approach uh, just three by itself, right? Well, that's, well, I don't know what happened to my three. Let's just approach three by itself. And um, what, what would this be in this case? What do you think? Infinity. infinity. So because this is infinity and this is infinity, then this is also infinity. Now, if say this was infinity and this was negative infinity, then you would just put D and E, right? So like if this was infinity and this is negative infinity, then you just put D and E because you can't really put anything else, right? But whenever they're the same, you just put the same answer. Again, in this case, it doesn't mean the limit exists. It just means that the function gets really, really big. So, so yeah. Any questions so far on this stuff? Does this seem hard or like, no? It doesn't seem hard? It's supposed to be, this is calculus. Um, <laughs> trying to think of what else I can, oh I know, I know. I, I think I have another idea. I, I don't, but I'll, I'll figure one out. Here's another example. So I'll do this and this. Let me look at the homework, just, just for like ideas. Right, so I can get some better ideas. There's some harder ones in the homework, I think, but we'll do them together in a minute. Let's see. We've already dealt with all the holes and stuff. <sighs> Come on. Oh, okay, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll do this. Here we go. Let's try this. One, two, three. I'm gonna put a little hole here. And then do this. And then um, up here I'm gonna put a dot. Okay, and then we're gonna do this. And then this is the number four. This is completely ridiculous. And then, uh, I guess I can do this. <laughs> okay, that'll be all right, I think. That'll give us some interesting questions, maybe, that we can do. Yeah, that'll work. What a weird graph. <laughs> it's so weird, it's making me nervous. So, okay, I'll take your time. And uh, then we'll, we'll do some problems. Anyone here a math major, by the way? Any math majors? Like mathematics is your major? Maybe? Good. No, good. 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 Good choices. All right. So extra credit. No, I'm kidding. Compute. <laughs> so bad. Compute. There is a math club, by the way. There's, there's actually a math club now at the school. It's been revived. Yeah. I think the president's going to come talk to us next week. She said she would come, I think. So, and yeah. I don't, although, yeah, I think it's before your class. I think it's before this class, maybe, the meetings. So, yeah, she'll come next week, maybe. I know, I know they're going to have food. Okay, so limit as x approaches, um, let's, do, let's do negative 3 from the left. Negative 3 from the left. Let's approach negative 3 from, from the left. Negative 3 from the left. Zero, very good, good, uh, 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 who was it, Aaron? Aaron, okay, very good, Aaron. Negative three from the left, the answer is zero, right? Because when x gets close to negative three, the y value gets close to zero, you see that? So zero, 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 so it's zero, that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do, let's do the limit of f of x. As x approaches negative three, uh, from the right, from the right. So what do you think that would be? One, one. yeah, one, good, good, one, very good. Because it's one, right? Because it's getting close to one, you see that? One, so one, good, one, one. And then now, obviously, I guess we can ask for the regular limit. You can think of it as a two-sided limit. These are called one-sided limits. So in this case, now we're just approaching, oh, not three, uh, negative three, negative three. Undefined, or, or another word would be D and E. Very good, John, D and E does not exist, like a pro. Yeah, good, good stuff, good stuff. You know calculus, right, it's great, it's so cool. John, did you know this before class, like this stuff? You've learned calculus, it's like, oh, it's so good, no, it's, it's just good, yeah. This is the this this stuff. It might seem easy, maybe if you think it's easy, but it's conceptually like it's 
limits are, by the way, why do we even do this? I didn't even, I didn't even tell you. There, in calculus, we study rates of change, like how fast the temperature is changing with respect to time, how fast your velocity is changing with respect to time. It's called acceleration, right? How fast your velocity changes with respect to time. Rates of change, how fast things are changing. In order to define that mathematically, we need limits. So that's why we have limits. So, yeah. Uh, D, D, little d. Here we go. Limit as x approaches 4 from the left. 4 from the left. What do you think it is? Positive infinity, good. Uh, Adam? No, Josh, that's close, not really, but okay. <laughs> so for four, four from the left. Infinity, I got confused. You know what I was gonna do? I'm hungry, so I saw the minus, and I almost put, I was gonna say negative infinity because of the minus. That's weak, yeah. Approaching four from the left is infinity, right? Infinity, don't do, don't do what I was gonna do. Infinity, even though he said the answer, I got confused. Infinity, all right, good. Good, Josh, infinity. A, B, C, D, E. Four from the right. Four from the right. What do you think? Negative, negative infinity, right? This one's different, right? So four from the right goes down forever. So negative infinity. So all, again, and as John was saying, all of these are D and E, right? But it's more descriptive this way, right? You have a better description of the function. And A, B, C, D, E, F. F. Let's take the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. Undefined. undefined. Very good. Undefined. Because the because or, or, or what would be a better answer? DNE. DNE. Yeah, DNE. Because they're different, right? So it does not exist. It does not exist. Any questions on this stuff? No one's confused? Like no questions? Does that actually make sense? Really? Okay, all right. Uh, then maybe I'm gonna show you something extra, just for fun, and then we'll do the homework. Something that will actually help you with the homework. It'll help you cheat. And well, and, well, it's a trick. So this is what we're doing next time, okay? So I'm gonna show you something what we're doing next time. So if you wanted to work ahead, you could. So in general, when you're computing limits, I won't write this down, I'll just say, I'll just say it in words. If you plug the number in and you get an answer, that's the answer. Okay. If you if you plug the number in and you don't get an answer, then you just do something else. Okay. Doesn't mean doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's D and E. It just means that you're not done. So here's so here's some examples. And I just want to do a few of these because as we go through the homework, it'll allow us to bypass a lot of stuff. So in general, when you're computing a limit, if you can plug in the number, you do it. So let's approach one, and let's look at the function x plus two. Okay, this is, again, this is next time, but we have time, um, and then after this we'll do some homework. So this is always a really good rule, so always, no matter what. Um, so the question is, what happens to x plus 2 when x gets close to 1? I suppose you could look at the graph and stuff, but just take the 1 and put it where the x is, right? So whenever you do that, you drop the limit sign, so you don't write the limit sign, and you just get 1 plus 2, which is 3. That's it. That's it. So the really important thing is to not write the limit sign, right? So if you can take the number and put it there, and it makes it made sense, right? So so right, one plus two, so that's it. But so when does when does it not make sense? Ah, oh, check this out. Game over. B. Check this out. Let's approach. What's a nice number? Seven. Seven. Okay. Okay, we could do that. Seven. It's a little bit harder. X squared minus forty nine over x minus seven. Nice, this is test level. Yeah, this is, this is next section, right? <clears throat> so the rule is, if you can plug in the number and you get the answer, do it. If not, then just do something else. So let's see, if we plug in seven, we're gonna get zero, right, because it's 49 minus 49, over zero. So it fails, yep? Zero, zero, seven, that's undefined. It's undefined. Yeah, you can factor it. That's right, very good, Nicholas. So, so if you plug in seven, you get zero over zero, so it's undefined, game over. So what do you do? You do what Nicholas said, right? You factor. So because we haven't plugged the number in yet, we still have to write the limit sign. This is super important, okay, for the first test. So you always write the limit sign until you actually evaluate it. So this is the difference of squares, right? It's x minus seven, x 
plus 7, right? Everyone remember that formula? A squared minus B squared, it's, it's, maybe it's been a while, maybe it's been like years. Remember that from, from math? Okay, all right, so then this is X minus. Has it been a while for anyone? Like, has anyone here like not had math in like several years? Like, how long? Two years? Two, two semesters, oh, okay, it's not bad. Yeah, I had a guy once, I asked that question, and he raised his hand, he said, 30 years! That's what he said. Yeah, he was like 65 years old. His name was Alfred. He looked like the guy from Batman, like the butler, <laughs> yeah. He was, he was a really great guy, but he, yeah. He got a B, so that's what was. Yeah, I know, I know, looking back, I just, yeah. He was a nice guy. Um, they cancel, right? Right, so you get X plus seven. So notice how I've written down the limit sign every single time, right? So you're always supposed to write down the limit sign. Notation is really important, right? Uh, now we're at the point where we can plug in the seven. So when you plug in the seven, do you write the limit sign? No, right, you drop it. Now you drop the limit, so you get seven plus seven, so you get 14, that's it. So in general, uh, when you're computing limits, always plug the number in first. If you get the answer, good. You got it right. If you don't get the answer, like zero over zero, you have to do something else. So what is that something else? It just takes practice, right? Like this would be an example of computing limits by factoring, right? So this is, this is, the ne this is next time. So why am I showing you now? Just because it'll make the homework easier in a couple minutes. So that's, a, that's an easy one. That's an easy one. Do you want to try one more of these? Want to do one more, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yes, okay, why not? I mean, yeah, let's do it. I mean, we got, yeah. Oh, and we, I was gonna say, we have nothing else to do. We do, we have homework, but why not? Uh, I'm out of ideas. Uh, X, oh, I know. Oh, how, why, why these went away, you mean? Yeah, because wouldn't it still be zero if it's canceling? It goes away, though, it cancels. It's gone. Do you see it? What do you mean? No! What do you mean? Okay. Oh, okay. So this, uh, so if you have, so if you have this, so if you have this, I got it. You sure? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so let's approach, let's approach zero. Here we go. Let's make it harder. This is going to be hard, I think. Wait, yes, here we go. Let's put a two here to make it uncomfortable. 2x squared. Oh, this is terrible. Here, you all try to do it. Try to do it. Take, take a couple minutes, see if you can do it. I don't even know what the answer is. Wait, I think I got it. Let's see, yeah, I don't want to think about it. I'll just, <laughs> I don't like doing stuff in my head. See if you can do it. Eat. Oh. I think so. Is it? No, yeah, negative three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Then I was right in my head. Did I say negative three, or I just thought it? I didn't say it, did I? I thought it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking it was too. So I was right. I just didn't, you know. Good pro. So how do you start? What do you do first? What do you factor out? The X. The X. Yeah, that's a good test question. Mm-hmm. Again, this is next time. Why are we doing it today? I don't know, but it's good. It'll help us for the homework, and it's good to learn stuff. Let's pull out the X. So we get ooh. 2 x minus, three. x minus 3 thanks yeah right yeah the 2 and the 3 are weird right i put it there to like make it look hard and it's just kind of like what <laughs> yeah this is this is me trying to be hard so limit <laughs> x to 0 so you still write the limit sign right you got to keep writing it that's the most common way people lose points on the test so now we've reached a point where we can evaluate the limit right so we can replace this with this. Do we write the limit sign now? No. no, right, you drop it now, right? It's really important. So it's two times zero. I notice I'm showing like every little step. It's ridiculous, you don't have to do that. You can just put negative three, but zero minus three, I won't write that, is negative three. That's it. Calculus, calculus. It'd be really cool if we could watch calculus movies, but we can't, so. There are calculus movies, mm -hmm. like math movies. Mm -hmm. They always have calculus references, so it's kind of fun like to watch them in a calculus class, but we don't have time for that, so I don't know why I'm talking about that. Any questions on this one? Huh? 
you can do like an example of a calculus movie? Yes, I can. I'm so glad you asked. There is a really old 80s movie called Stand and Deliver. Yeah, it's really old. It's like about this like guy in California and like there's all these kids and like they're like in the ghettos and they're all from Mexico and they failed, they, they aced the AP test and they think they cheated so they make them retake it and they ace it again. It's like, you know, it's like. And they're doing, they do calculus. They do some serious, they do calc one and calc two and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I won't extend until after. That's a fun movie though. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a feel good movie. It's like, you know, those, you know, yeah. Any uh, on Goodwill Hunting? That's a math movie. You've seen that, right? Goodwill Hunting. You have seen it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I guess we should do some homework. I think we're ready for that. So let's do some. I'm gonna turn this off while we do homework because it, it, it's kind of in the way, maybe because the homework is gonna be here. So I'm just gonna like.